if you have an abscess or a, well, I think something jumped up in front of me here. Okay. <laughs> Just click okay. I'm recording this. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you have an abscess or, or something of that nature, periodontal disease where your gums are inflamed and all of this, it's, it can create a, 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 a blood-borne bacteria within the body. Mm -hmm. It can cause uh, exacerbation of heart problems. It can cause uh, difficulty with uh, your heart valves. It can weaken your blood vessels. And a lot of, uh, sometimes, you know, it used to be in the past, you know, patients had a, a history of cardiovascular disease. We took uh, extreme cautions to make sure by pre-medicating them, but we found out now we don't need to do that. As only in extreme cases, we need to uh, worry about the pre-medication. But that blood, uh, what, what some patients don't realize is that when your gums are bleeding, and you're having uh, abscesses from maybe a, a, a decayed tooth, that your body is set up in a system such that, that things are so interconnected that that blood, that bacteria gets in the bloodstream. Wow. And it can go to your heart and it can affect the valves. It can weaken the blood vessels so that they aren't able to uh, uh, move that blood through your system and that it can create problems of, of that nature, as well as uh, uh, endo, uh, uh, bacterial endocarditis, things mm -hmm. of that nature. So uh, patients need to be aware that even though uh, they may be healthy, that it's having these transient bacteremias can cause them to have the develop heart problem by weakening these valves. And patients who have a history of having heart, have a history of heart disease, even need to be even more cautious to make sure that uh, uh, they take the precautions of having brushing, you know, flossing, going to see your dentist on a regular basis. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that I, let me just point out that, that patients need to be aware of. One is if you have red or inflamed gums, if you have bleeding gums, that tells you a lot right there. This, mm. If you bite into an apple or if you bite into a, during the summertime when we're having a, a, a our cookouts, if you bite into a corn on the cob and you see blood on there, mm. you got a problem. Mm. You need to be aware. That means you've got and maybe what we call an open wound by having these inflamed tissues. And so if you have spontaneous bleeding from those causes, or if you have pus from the gums, or loose teeth, or very bad breath. You know, if 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 you are if your significant other or friends tell you that your breath has an unpleasant odor to it, it may be a sign of periodontal disease. Right. So that, so that can be significant as far as uh, your uh, cardiovascular health is concerned. Yeah, wow, Dr. Owens. I mean, you just gave us so much information. And you know, this is so good because it's not only about healthy living, but it's about taking care of your, of your hygiene. It is so important. And I mean, you point out some things about um, if you, some signs or what have you, you know, some signs that if you, you mm -hmm. may be having some type of disease, periodontics or what have you in your mouth. So I'm going to skip to the, I'm going to skip a question and I'm going to ask, can you tell us some products? Flossing, <laughs> the best toothpaste, what's the best mm -hmm. Listerine, you know, that could help us um, uh, besides going to those doctors, the dentist every six months. Can you elaborate on that for us? You know, it's, I'm going to tell you what the recommendation of the National okay. Dental Association and the American Dental Association is. Mm -hmm. That's brush twice a day. And uh, it's, you should brush for at least two minutes. Mm -hmm. Again, that way, you know, you've done a, a fairly thorough job. You need to use a, uh, uh, Hygiene assistants like uh, uh, floss. Yeah. And those things are very important. Uh, eating health is significant in, in making sure you have diets that are have where you have your minerals and your vitamins and all of that. That yeah. diet. diet. And uh, also, uh, you know, you need to look at things in terms of visiting your dentist twice a year is preferable, but at least once a year. Yeah, okay. Uh, and so it's the toothpaste should have fluoride. 
Mm, fluoride. Okay. Okay. And, and one thing for your children. There are some new things that are out that you know, that parents need to be aware of as far as the children are concerned. And that's asking the dentist about things like silver diamond fluoride, which is which sometimes you know you have a child they're a little fearful of the dentist. You can uh, you can apply silver diamond fluoride under the rest of those uh, cavity lesions in the in the child's mouth or even in the adult's mouth. Yeah. It can, it can either give them a chance to be able to get mature so they're able to be able to, to work well with the, with the dental, uh, dentist and the dental team. Mm -hmm. And also, if, uh, if they have a small lesion that does not need to be filled, the silvodiamine fluoride can arrest the tooth and help the tooth to remineralize. So it's, it, there are some good things out there. Yeah. Oh, the that, rinses, yeah, the rinses, one thing about the rinses, you know, sometimes patients over rinse. And what can happen is you can disrupt your normal bacterial flow. That's good bacteria mm -hmm. you want to have in our mouth. Yeah. And so by over rinsing, it can uh, disrupt, it can disturb your normal bacterial flora and it allows other microorganisms to overgrow mm -hmm. or uh, fungal microorganisms, which can create some yeast infections within the mouth. So oh. things you need to be aware of and, and just, you know, Brushing and flossing, you do that, you're not going to have any problems. And I recommend an electric toothbrush. Oh, okay. Yeah, it helps with patients who do not have good brushing skills. And we have patients who brush at their teeth, but they don't brush well. Yeah. So that electric toothbrush takes a lot of the uh, technique uh, issues out of uh, the patient's hands and, and gives them an opportunity to be able to utilize those uh, tools that will help them to do a better job. Okay. Oh, wow. Thank you for that. Um, I know um, it was recommended or I heard a, another um, dentist say to use that pur purple Listerine. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember why or what they said, but I went out and bought some purple Listerine. <laughs> and I mean, I'm like obsessed with teeth. I go out and buy all, every every little thing that comes up. But the doctor did recommend that for my for my um, daughter, and I was like, well, I know they didn't recommend that for me when I was uh, a a child, so I was hesitant. But now I appreciate you explaining that. Um, Just remember, don't get those mouthwash watches that have alcohol. Yeah. It's really too disruptive to your bacterial flora. And you don't, if you brush well, actually rinsing with plain water is sufficient and using the rinse periodically. There's okay. Fresh smell on your breath, but yeah. they have some restorative mouthwashes that are, that are helpful, but you don't really need to if you brush well with a, a good fluoride toothpaste. Okay. And, okay. and floss as well. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you. I want to let the group know if you have questions, I'm going to ask them at the end so you can plug them in the chat and I will read them off. Um, you know, um, Dr. Owens, going back, you know, my business is olive oil and I always like to dispel different myths that people have about olive oil. And I don't know if this is a myth or what, but I'm going to ask the question anyway, because I like to be transparent so is it is it true that as you get older should your teeth fall out we see a lot of older people that have missing teeth on the side on the front they hanging can you kind of go into details of some details about that well just because you get older does not mean that you have to lose your teeth okay there are certain conditions certain uh, conditions that some patients are predisposed to. Some patients are predisposed to certain periodontal problems. Okay. And they might have those problems, but there, there are uh, strategies for intervention. Hmm. You have a severe periodontal problem, you need to be seeing not only your regular dentist for, for checkups, but you need to see a periodontist. Yes. You may have to do have some interventions that help you maintain your teeth. But for the average individual, if they have good oral hygiene and they visit their dentist on a regular basis to make for screens, then there's no reason that you can't have your teeth 
when you leave it. <laughs> that is so good. You know, uh, right. as we as we get older, you know, sometimes we be like, man, the teeth not that important right now. Let me go to this and get this, uh, you know, mon um, mammogram or what have you. But it's so important for us to stay on top of those those same appointments that we had as we, you know, grow up. Let's keep our yes. teeth in our mouth and be able to eat delicious mushrooms okay i'm not gonna say a fake all right absolutely you know and, and not it's not you know you pointed out heart disease but there are uh there are a number of things that are impacted by oil like diabetes pregnancy i mean there's a hypothesis now that uh, poor oil health can impact birth poor, uh, can uh, cause poor birth outcomes so don't think that you that you always need because you, you can't forget the one thing that the body is, is, is one complete organism and you can't separate out parts. Yeah. Interconnected, the, the mouth is the, is the window to the, to the body. Yeah. You don't, you know, this is the one, this is the one area that you really need, you need to maintain uh, even more so because it, it, it's involved in air exchange, food. I mean, there's so many things that it, it's involved yeah. in that you, you need to uh, get special care to the mouth. So. Yeah, that's true. It enhances you know, the rest of the body. Yeah. Yeah, I think about you know the sugars that we put in our in our mouth. Even as kids, those cause ca um, cavities, and it, it starts from what you actually put in your mouth. I mean, everything yes. bad or good touches the inside of your mouth. So. Um, <laughs> Thank you for coming back with that full circle uh, about taking care of the whole and don't leave a piece out, you know, within your body. Yes. Um, I do want to get to opening questions. Um, we have Natalie who at, wanted to know how often do you need an x-ray? It, it varies from patient to patient. If, if uh, we have patients who have a high incidence of, of the two, they need to have x-rays more often. But you take a patient who is who historically has not had an issue with with cavities, you know, once every two or three years is 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 fine, and you can kind of play it by ear. Some patients come in strictly for their team, and they don't uh, and they don't they don't they decline x-rays. So it it varies from patient to patient depending on the situation, depending on the periodontal issues. If they have a uh, 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 are predisposed to certain bacteria that cause bone loss, you need to monitor that, that bone level. Mm -hmm. And if, if they have a history, our family history, of uh, our dietary habits that predispose them to the case, then it may be necessary to uh, look at it more often. Yeah. It, it's, it's the recommendation from most organizations is do it as is necessary. Mm -hmm. But not, you don't have, you don't need a, a schedule for taking x ray That's not necessary. Right. Okay. Because so normally they'll x ray when they see, if they see a problem or something that they right. can't determine, they want to really dig more into that and see with an x ray. Um, Natalie shared with us that her dad passed away at 98 and he had all of his teeth. So uh, there you go. You know, you I know. know Back in the day, you know, those in the back in the day alone, you know, you lose one teeth, they put a whole pack denture, you know, dentures in your mouth. But that was then, you know, times have changed. So and uh, a lot of people now, you know, they don't use the dentures, I, I'm assuming. I'm just I just there's no stats behind that. I just said that. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's 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 one of those things where it used to be a time where patients weren't uh, and, and, and public in general. What, was not educated as to mm. what's the best way to proceed. Uh, used to be a time I said, well, I don't want to spend the money. I, I just go ahead and if I got a cab in it, just take it out. You know, so that was the philosophy. Okay. But, but it, it, that's problematic. You, know, you don't want to be dangerous because it, it can be a, a, a spiral of problems that can occur from have, even having dentures, you know, wow. bone loss that occurs from the pressure of the denture on the bone. It's called bone resorption because the only pressure that is that is not pathological is the pressure through the teeth or the membrane that surrounds it. If it's uh, denture on bone, it causes the bone to wear away. That's why patients end up having loose dentures. It's because of the bone resorption. Yeah. So it 
it's not a good thing. Uh, just maintain as many teeth as you can. It's going to be to your benefit in the long haul. Wow. Thank you, you know, so much for sharing and your time um, today, Dr. Owens. I definitely appreciate it. I don't see that we have any more questions in the chat. Um, I don't want to hold you long, but I do appreciate you stopping by just to share with um, Let's Fight Back, the participants who are on that journey to living a healthier life from the inside, the outside, spiritual, physically, mentally, and now uh, through our teeth and our gums. So <laughs> thank you. And, and, and thank I want to applaud, I want to applaud you for your business uh, with your olive oil because that's, that's what I cook with. Okay. I cook with olive oil because we need to get our folks out of the habit of using oils and, and, and cooking aids that are not uh, dietarily and uh, beneficial for them. You know, so yes. I applaud you for that. <laughs> yes, I thank you so much. And as all our guests who come and visit, I do provide, I do ship as a gift, a bottle of my amazing olive oil. So after this call, if you send me an email with your address, you will get a bottle of emblem olive oil. Um, I'm, so I am, um, that's just, you know, a thank you for on behalf of my company. Um, we do have someone in the chat that says, thank you very much, very informative and, and informational information we need and that that's Dr. Joy Morgan who's on the call with us this evening. So thank you for that comment. Thank you. <laughs> so Dr. Oh, Owens, the bottle too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Owens. Please have a wonderful evening. Rest of your All evening. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. All right, ladies. Well, as you all know, this is week 12. It's some good news. We are holding out for next week. Okay, it's going to be our final, final week. We're going to go through week 12. Y'all thought I was going to cut it short just because we at week 12, but we haven't finished week 12. Okay, so next week is our final week. We will have, um, uh, it will basically be kind of like the same thing, you know, but anybody want to share any good news, share it then and there. Um, we have guests on the line, so we're not going to get in, 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 into anything personal, but I thank you all so much for your commitment. I thank you all that you all stay with the program, enjoying the changes in your body, in your mind. This is what Let's Fight Back is all about, but it's all about also sharing the good news to others, to have other people that you love and care about to benefit from this program. So I want you all to have an amazing day. If you need to talk to me offline, that's fine. Thank you so much, Miss Elaine, for your testimony. It was just amazing. So um, you all, if you all don't have any questions, have a wonderful, wonderful day rest of the week okay and we'll be here again 5 30 same time same place everybody looking good <laughs> so go ahead and have a have a blessed week okay everybody all right thank you all righty bye natalie bye bye